Hello and welcome to Eastbury Community School Science Department. My name is Mr Chowdhury and I'm the Head of Science and I'll be showing you around the Science Corridor. Now soon I'll be passing over to Mrs Amoa who will be showing you one of the science labs but before we get there I'm going to talk you through a bit about the science team. So we have a number of dedicated teachers and technicians within science who put students first. In science I believe that we are the best department in the school and the reason why is because we strive for a balance between academic excellence and a desire to help students discover their own gifts, interests and place in this world. So an important aspect at Eastbury is student and staff wellbeing because we believe in a blended curriculum where we enrich the learning of students and we make sure that they all get the education that everybody deserves but at the same time we believe that we ensure that students should also love what they're doing and have a love of learning. Now, if you were to talk about results, we have fantastic results, as you shall see, for biology, chemistry and physics, also with combined science, and we are privileged enough to have a, a dedicated team with a second in science, Mrs Omoa, who you'll be uh, seeing very shortly, as well as a head of biology, Mrs Begum, head of chemistry, Ms Johan, a head of physics, Mr Payton, who will be showing you an example of a practical that you'll be doing in September when you come in Year 7. Hello, my name is Mrs. Amoa. I am the second in charge of the science department. This is my lab, and most of our labs are actually the same. The, the desk and the chairs are set up in a similar way. And as you can see, we have a lot of gas taps, and we have sockets, all this will enhance teaching and learning. And over here, I can actually show you some of the work done by some students. This is an experiment on chromatography where students have to find out the different colors that makes up dyes or ink. And here are their results. These results will be analyzed when I see them in next week's lesson. So, in science, we have a range of clubs to improve and su to support, enhance our children's learning. So we have science club, science ambassador, homework, revision and intervention clubs. We have Crest Award, and at Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5, we do, have, we do take our students to a lot of trips, especially to the universities. We take them to Queen Mary and some other universities, so at least they can see how students can make progress from Key Stage 3 to Key Stage 4 and then to Key Stage 5. Now we have a film cupboard here where we do some experiments that involves gases. So for safety, we do them in the film cupboard. And here is another lab. Set up similar way to my lab, as you can see. We have all these hand sanitizers, as you know, for health and safety. So, once again, we look forward to seeing you all, and we expect you to come in, learn, and learn well, and achieve your targeted grades, and have a bright future. We look forward to teaching you all. Hey everyone, welcome to East 3 I'm Miss Begum, I'm Head of Biology here, and today I'm going to show you a biology experiment. One to test um, if the egg white in this egg really does contain protein. So, to do this, you first need to extract some of the egg white and put it into a boiling tube. And then what, what we add to it is some sodium hydroxide solution, commonly referred to as Bira A. Just a few drops. Give that a bit of a shake. Then we're going to add some copper, copper sulfate solution, which is commonly referred to as Bireb B. Also a few drops. And then we wait to see a color change. So if there's a color change of purple, like so, that indicates to us that there's some protein present. So we can conclude that the egg white definitely does contain protein. 
Right, thank you very much, and we're going to pass uh, it on to my colleague, Mr. Han. Hi there, I'm Ms. Johan and I'm the Head of Chemistry here at Eastbury School and today I will be doing a neutralisation demonstration. So this is when we react an acid with an alkali. Now acids you can find in your kitchen, for example lemon juice and vinegar and alkalis you can usually find in cleaning products. What's really nice about this experiment is we can um, see some nice colour changes going on. So the first thing I'm going to add into this burette is some indicator. And to that, I am going to be adding some of this hydrochloric acid. And then to that, I will then be adding some of my alkali. And here we should be able to observe some nice color changes going on. So as you can see, it's still quite acidic, so if I start adding in some more alkali, I can observe some nice colour changes going on. And the fact that it's turning green here means that we are reaching our point of neutralisation. Um, and if we keep adding it, it should remain a nice blue colour as well. And so there we have it. That's rainbow fizz, neutralisation, um, which hopefully you'll get to do when you come here. Um, but for now, I'm going to pass you on to Mr Payton, who is the Head of Physics here at Eastbury School. Hello, I'm Mr Payton. I'm the Head of Physics at Eastbury Community School. And I'm going to show you something fun with a copper pipe, a brass block and a magnet. What I want you to do is I want you to count the amount of time it takes this brass block to fall from the top of this tube to the bottom. Don't worry, you'll hear a bang. In three, two, one. How long was that? About a second, maybe a bit less. Now I'm gonna try it with this magnet. You need to do exactly the same thing. Are you ready? In three, two, one. Hmm. That's strange, that's quite a bit longer, but why? When the magnet falls through the copper tube, the magnetic field is changing, and that changing magnetic field causes an electric field to be formed, and that electric field opposes the motion of this magnet. 